Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police with Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog breaking the trail in the relentless pursuit of lawbreakers in the wild days of the Yukon. Back to the days of the gold rush as Sergeant Preston with his wonder dog Yukon King meets the challenge of the Yukon. This is the Yukon, the territory patrolled by Sergeant Preston one of less than 300 uniformed guardians of justice in a land bigger than the whole of New England. A land filled with men of every nationality and station drawn by the lure of easy riches. Forty Mile, a pioneer town of some 200 cabins and places of amusement. No, 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 Hiawatha, you're too far over the left. Are you hurt? Oh, just my feelings, I guess. But he sure ruined my hat, whoever it was. Well, who were they, do you know? Ma'am, I don't even know what they were. The wounded Indian, Skookum Charlie, died even before word of the crime had been telegraphed to mounted police headquarters at Dawson. Within 24 hours, Sergeant Preston was in 40 Mile beginning work on the case. I tell you, Sergeant, they knew what they were after, but it was impossible to identify the three men. They kept me with my face to the wall, worked fast, and rushed out the door. By the time I got my gun out of the desk and went after them, they were out of range. You say your two warehouse men were unloading a boat and your bookkeeper was at the post office, is that right? Yeah, that's right. They caught me from behind while I was alone there. Were there any witnesses who might have seen the direction they took? No, there were no people around. Everybody had stampeded to Miller's Creek. Say, wait a minute. There was a photographer who got slugged over the head and uh, Miss Laverne happened along and took care of him. Dolly Laverne, the performer? Yeah. You know, some people have all the luck. She's some looker. Well, thanks, Mr. McBain. I'll have a talk with Miss Laverne and try to find out who the photographer is. Meanwhile, I'll see if King can pick up a trail from this piece of torn shirt. Evidently, one of the men caught himself on a protruding nail from a crate inside. I've talked with your men here, and none of them have a shirt made of this material. Well, I hope King has success with it, Sergeant. They got away with a fortune in furs. You know, that's a wonderful dog you have there. Oh, uh, thanks. He's quite a dog. Practically a member of the force. Well, I'll keep you informed, McBain. Advise Dawson to issue a notice of the theft to all of our checkpoint posts. Goodbye. Thank you, Sergeant. Night, gentlemen. Good boy, King. Let's see what we can make out of these tracks. Two boats. We got narrower keel marks than usual. Yeah, they must have taken their horses with them. A smart leader, King, that knows how to break a scent. Well, of clothes. You say this is uh, your horse, Mr. Loge? He certainly is. I reported him stolen two days ago. I'm happy to get him back. Any idea who stole him? If I did, Sergeant, I'd sure make him sorry for it. Have you seen any anybody around here that might be suffering from a toothache? Nope, I can't say that I have. Why? Oh, I thought it might cast some light on one of the men who took part in the robbery. Keep a lookout for me, will you, Loge? Sure, Sergeant, sure. Get all kinds of customers around here. Much obliged. All right, Mr. Hennessy. Any idea where Miss Laverne might be? She said she was riding out to the picture fellow's cabin. You mean the photographer that was taking pictures at the time of the fur robbery? Yeah. Name's Horace Bean. And I'm blessed if I know what she sees in him. Where is this photographer's cabin? The old Duff place. Out trail. Thanks, Mr. Hennessy. Hold the breath, please. One, two, three. Oh, gosh, you moved. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I hope I didn't spoil the picture. Oh, not at all, Sarge. This is Mr. Bean. How do you do, sir? Good morning, Sergeant. Horace off to take some pictures of me. He's been awfully nice, and he's such an artist. Small repayment for Miss Laverne's looking after me. Her pictures will also add color to my series. You know, beautiful lady in the wild Yukon, a diamond in the rough setting, that sort of thing. 
great copy. I'm glad to find you two together. Please tell me all you know about the robbery and the shooting at the Madison Warehouse. By any chance did you happen to get a picture, Mr. Dean? On the spot with a camera and not a picture to show for it. A terrible thing, but I can't be much help. I didn't see any of it. I guess my editor was right. I'm no good. Nonsense, Horace. Wait till he sees that picture you took of me. Then he'll change his tune. Oh, but Horace is right about the thieves. We didn't get a chance to look at them. It happened so fast. For a daylight crime, this one's strangely lacking in witnesses. I have one request to make of you, Miss Laverne. Yes? Well, most everyone goes to see your performance at the music hall. <laughs> well, thank you, Sergeant. If you should see a man with a swollen jaw, get in touch with me at once. And advise no one. A swollen jaw? I don't believe I understand. Well, I have reason to believe that one of the men who took part in the robbery is suffering from a bad toothache. It's just a long chance, but, uh, well, I found this. Well, that smells like a roll of cloves. That's right, Miss Laverne. A standard remedy for toothache everywhere. Oh, my, I'm going to be late for rehearsal. Horace, can we finish this later? Fine. Oh, Sergeant, may I drive back with you? It'll be a pleasure. Fine. Bye, Mr. Bean. Goodbye, Sergeant. Goodbye, Horace. Bye. What if I should find the man with a toothache? Intrepid, newsman, captures, desperate, criminal. What a headline! Nice talking with you, Sergeant. I hope I didn't bore you with all my questions. But you're in such an interesting business. It's a pleasure, Miss Laverne. Good day. Thank you, Sergeant. Oh, well, Miss Laverne. I can take your horse for that shoeing job now. Go, oh, you're hurting me. Not before I find out what you were talking to that Monty about. Nothing that was any of your business. Well, just see that you don't tell Preston anything. I told you last night, I want nothing further to do with you. You and your ideas for easy money. What makes you think I talk to law about what I know? Lady, my business here's a lot. Dolly, you know I'm crazy about you. I'm sorry. I don't really care how you feel. Just leave me alone. Someday, someone's going to make a camera you can put in your back pocket. Come on, Jeremiah. You and I are going to take some nature studies. Somebody's coming. Uh, I'm not glad to see you. Give me my oil of clothes. Didn't have time to get it. This is no time for joking. I'm not joking. I haven't got it. I've got to have it. This tooth is killing me. I offered to pull it out a long time ago. It'd be all over in a minute. Oh. All right, then suffer. I'll go crazy. I told you I didn't have time to get it. Sergeant Preston's in town. Somehow he knows about your toothache and swollen jaw. You and Tyler just waited out here. Ramsey gets in on the bell tomorrow. When he pays off for these furs, you boys get your split and vamoose. I continue to run my business. That Monty's poison. Might as well be dead as this way. Don't be stupid. I'll bring the stuff out with Ramsey tomorrow. 
No, Kip, no. Today, do you hear me now? Do you want me to go crazy? It's about all we need. All right, come along to the edge of town with me. I'll bring the stuff out to you and you get right back out here. Oh, thanks, Skip. Thanks. You'll never regret this. Just one warning, Ford. Keep out of sight when I leave you. Preston sees you. You lead that muddy hair on your way back, so help me. I'll gun you down. Keep your ears and eyes open till this guy gets back. No one will see me. Come on, Kip. This place gives me the creeps. It still beats the gallows. Come in. Well, still photographing your favorite entertainer, eh? Hello, Sergeant. No, this is a landscape view, the one that's going to cinch my job for me back home. Oh, yes, I know the spot. It was below there yesterday. Hey, just a minute. Isn't this a rowboat on the river? I guess so. I don't think it spoils the picture, do you? Oh, as a matter of fact, I'm real curious about this boat. Bean, do you have some way of enlarging this portion of the picture with the boat in it? It'll take a lot of time and work. Sure, I can do it, Sergeant. Good. How long will it take you? Well, if 7 by 11 is large enough, I'll get right to it. Ready first thing in the morning. Why do you only want this particular part of the picture? It's not much artistically. Well, Bean, this might turn out to be the best picture you ever took. Might help me catch the fur thieves in the murder of Skookum Charlie. I know I shouldn't have brought you. Get off. You promised my medicine. You're heading back to the cabin now. You'd better be careful. Keep to the brush. All right, get off. Start walking. I'm your neighbor down the trail here. I've got a terrible toothache. And I thought maybe you might be able to help. Toothache? Well, um, I don't know. I uh, I have quite a few chemicals. Dr. Bushmiller's painkiller? Or oil of cloves? Oil of cloves? Oil of cloves. Well, uh, step into my laboratory. We'll find something. Go on in. I think I know just the thing for you. Not till I fetch Sergeant Preston, you robber, you, 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 you murderer! Hey. Come on, Jeremiah. We've got to get the Preston right away. Oh. Oh. Hey! Jeremiah! Dolly, I have to talk to you. I've got to tell you how I feel about you. You know how I feel about you, Kip Loge. Just leave me alone. I have a show to do in a few minutes, and I'd like to get a breath of fresh air. Dolly, you know I love you. I'll do anything for you, give you anything. With the furs I've stored in the cabin, I'm going to have plenty of money. I won't have to run a livery stable business much longer. You and I can go away together and get married. Live it up back in the States. Furs? Money? Where would you get furs and money? Certainly the livery business isn't that profitable. You're a smart girl, Dolly, my kind of girl. Am I? I don't know whether I am or not. I know, and Kip Lodge rarely makes a mistake. Why, honey, we're gonna be rich. Well, let me sleep on it, and I'll tell you tomorrow. And now we bring you tomorrow, Kip. the toast of the continent, the incomparable Dolly Laverne. And as soon as Kip said that, Sergeant Preston, I decided I'd better tell you. Do you suppose Kip Loge is one of the robbers? One of the murderers? Well, I'll know more in the morning. Horace is working on something special for me that might prove invaluable. 
Did, uh, did Loge tell you where this cabin was situated? No, only that he had a fortune in furs. Sergeant, I'm afraid of Kip Loge. If he finds out that Horace knows anything... Horace but... is a fine felon. Shows a lot of promise. Yes, he is rather nice. He's quiet. Not like most men I know. Not like Kip Loge. Well, you go to bed. Let me handle this. You've helped the case a lot already. Good, Good night. night. Jeremiah! Might as well face it, Horace. You're lost, stupid. Jeremiah! Jeremiah! Jess Ramsey, buyer of stolen furs. Now well, things are beginning to take shape. Follow him, King. in an unlisted boat. Hey, I'm in here and I can't get out. Well, only you would pull a stunt like that. Next time, don't slam the door so hard you drop the bar. Say, that picture you made... The Mountie. Lode. A picture of Lode. Holy smoke. I don't like this, Loge. Preston after you, an Indian killed. Killing's not in my line. You'll change your tune when you see these pelts. like this deal. These furs are worth a fortune. You're getting them for a quarter of their value. Yes, I know, but a man's been killed, and I don't like it. But if the rest are as good as these, I tell you what, they'll do. Where have you been? Look, Lodge, Preston's on to us. You, this section of the river, the woods, everything, right here in this picture. I'm getting out of here. We're not leaving without those furs. Get them in the boats fast. You heard me. We're heading down river to Alaska. Get going! Jeremiah! Oh! Oh! Right back at the cabin. I might have known.
Hey, you in there. How's the toothache? Dean, is that you? Good grief, that sounded like Preston. Sergeant Preston? Unbar the door. How did you get in there? I fell into a trap. I lost a lot of time. He took that print with him. Can you make me another? I'm all set up. Well, if you can make several, I'll use them for posting. Sure. The fellow must have stolen Rex. Well, what are you going to do? Wait a minute. Good boy, King. I knew I could count on you. Thanks, Bean. You've helped a lot. I think we've got them on the run. They'll probably be forced to go down river by boat so they can get across the border with those furs. Well, how are you going to stop them? Well, I'll cross the river above 40 Mile. Stop them at the bend. May I do anything to help, Sergeant? Oh, you've helped a lot, Bean. Remember, this is my job. They've killed one man already. That's Dolly's horse. A time like this, you talk about women? This means I get a chance to pay them both back. What are you talking about? Have you gone loco? I have a personal score to settle. You walk up to the door and get their attention. I'll attend to the rest. Then with the horse, we'll be so far away from here by dark, Preston will never catch us. He won't even know which way we've gone. Now, this is for night shots. Magnesium ribbon. Makes everything as light as day. Well, isn't it terribly dangerous? Well, not when you know how to handle it. For instance, you... Hello. Don't either of you move. This is where I square things up. Got him, Ramsey! Careful, Lord, don't let that thing go off. All right, stop there. Tyler, get on the other side of that tree with your back to it. Ford, you get up there with your back to the tree. Or get your hands behind you. Sergeant! Sergeant! Dolly's in there! I had a hunch they'd follow you here. Luz, Ramsey, come on with your hands up! One more step, Preston, and the girl head gets the next one. Well, that's Dr. Molly. Feel a lot better if I know where Dean is. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! There we are. I'll arrest you both in the name of the Crown. Darling. Ron, get your hands behind your back. Sorry you had to come back from Dawson to pick up my sworn statement, Sergeant. I would have brought it down to you. It's all part of my job, Mr. McBain. You may have to come down to testify. However, it'll be worthwhile if it'll help convict the robber that murdered that Indian. Sergeant, we wanted you to hear the good news. I telegraphed my paper in New York the story of how we caught Loge and his gang. The editor thought it was great. He sent an immediate reply. The paper sending Horace to Manila to cover the war with Spain. I'm sailing with General Otis from Frisco on the next troop ship. Yes, he's a full-fledged war correspondent, aren't you? That's right. Thanks to you and King and Sergeant Preston. And I'm going to wait for him in San Francisco. Well, congratulations to you both. King? No doubt about it, this case is closed. 